Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now from 2006 to 2009, if you are building a PC then it's likely you will have opted for a Core 2 Duo processor, the undoubtedly popular Socket 775 range from Intel. Varying in performance and price, there was a model for every budget and I'm always seeing other videos of these processors still performing quite well today. By the time the Core 2 Duos came to an end in 2009, Intel's Core 2 quads had been out for a couple of years and were the go-to choice for demanding users and more intensive applications. The i7-920 and 940 were also available for high-end buyers. In May of 2009, the E7600 was launched and this is what would be the last Core 2 Duo CPU of the lineup. Now some of you may think that it was the E8 series that launched last, but the last of those released in the third quarter of 2008. So although the E7600 launched last, it wasn't the best and was actually considered a budget mid-range option at the time. Not surprising considering some of the stuff that it was up against. At a retail price of around $140 or pounds, you would have got a 3.06 GHz dual core CPU with a TDP of 65 watts and no integrated graphics with a 3 megabyte cache. So let's find out if this almost 8 year old mid range CPU still has what it takes to run games. We've paired it with our GTX 1060 here and 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM using a Biostar G41 D3C motherboard. First, let's take a look at some other benchmarks. Cinebench R15 returned a CPU score of 177. To put that into perspective, this CPU would sit close to a modern Celeron G1840. We also tested out a real world Premiere Pro render. Using the E7600, we rendered a 30 second 1080p 60 frames per second clip, which took 65 seconds. And again, to put that into perspective, our i5 4460 that I normally use for editing did it in 26. I wouldn't say that despite the difference, the E7600 is too slow, because the speed is to be expected from this older piece of hardware, and they do cost less than $10 or pounds on the used market. So let's jump into some games here and first things first, there is a bottleneck as to be expected when using a card like this, but it allows us to get the most out of our CPU. We've got Fallout 4 here at 1080p with the high preset and we're seeing 39 frames per second on average, which is playable but the game does suffer from stuttering here and there. That doesn't seem to be as prominent in this recording, but it is there and is quite noticeable during the actual gameplay. The more you venture into the uninhabited wasteland the better, but settlements like Good Neighbour and Sanctuary do make the system suffer. Moving on to Far Cry Primal and again with the high settings at 1080p, the game returns about 34 frames per second. Although the CPU is of course the limiting factor here, it's nice to see a steady frame rate and the fact that Far Cry Primal natively supports dual cores, unlike Far Cry 4, is good too because there's definitely no problem with it running, aside from a few frame drops that are few and far between. Next up, a something a little less demanding, and a game loads of you have been asking me to test for some time, League of Legends. We set the game to the very high settings here, and saw an average frame rate in the mid hundreds. There was no lag or slowdown, and the game pretty much ran flawlessly, even in the heat of battle. Finally, we tried Watch Dogs 2, which at medium settings saw a return of 42 FPS with some stutter. In this case, though, you can't blame the CPU entirely because this game isn't fantastically optimised, and so the closer you get to the city, the lower the frame rate gets. Overall, though, not a bad experience, but I wouldn't recommend making this pairing. It's nice to see that if you were upgrading your PC and the graphics card was the first thing to arrive, you could still stick it in your Core 2 Duo system and have a fairly decent time. The thing is though, I want to emphasise more on the legacy of this series, a once popular lineup of processors that will still let you play your favourite games all these years on, and it makes you wonder if one day Intel's core lineup of i3s, 5s, and 7s will meet the same demise despite their present popularity. So guys, thank you so much for watching this last look at the uh, Core 2 Duo series, specifically the last ever Core 2 Duo released. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next video.